Right. Uh, next on the uh, batter's deck is Melody Hayes, and she's going to talk about what you would do differently the next time, or any other time. No. I, so I was going to. I'm going to make this a little more just kind of learning lessons along the way and kind of what I've learned because some of you are maybe in different places in your careers as in project management. Some may be very experienced. Some not very experienced. And. Um, what I like to think you do is learn from your mistakes and you need to hopefully, and I've been very fortunate to have a culture of support in my career where people recognize the talent I had that maybe I wasn't necessarily as polished as I needed to be in certain aspects of running projects even though I knew how to run a project. Um, and I'm just gonna give you a couple quick examples and some of it is just related to having the buy-in from your customers in front of the department director at corrections and he tore up the SPR and threw it right back across the table at me because a question about how involved our customer was. So this was some years back, but you know that was kind of a. Oh, so they're a and yeah, yeah. Oh well, yeah. So, so. Yeah. So I took away. Well, okay. Well, I'm never going to be unprepared again and not know where my business site is with me when I go into a meeting around a project and project approval. So I've carried that with me forward for every project I've been on since then. I want them at the table engaged and understand and you heard me in the last session talk a lot about that having that sponsor buy-in but these are just trials by fire that really taught me a lot um, when I was at uh, the employment development department I was uh, an application development manager on a very large uh, business change project which actually was very successful but but I uh, had some run-ins with the integration vendor and they didn't really like how I was operating and they complained to the project director so I was moved off the project so that okay, well, there's some lessons to be learned there about how we inter how we interact with our vendors and you know making sure that I have the support and clear direction from my leadership when I'm going in to try to negotiate uh, situations. So it's the same thing that you can take with your sponsors. You know, you just have to be real clear what the direction. And if you're not the one running the project, you need to be in sync with what the direction is of the administration of the department of the CIO of the project director, and that you're consistent. So. You know, I learned I better be a little more connected and understand and understand this vision. Um, and then just the last example, um, I had a project in my current organization um, where the project sponsor, I didn't really, I learned a lot about political, people that are more political and are more worried about how it looks outward and how they're perceived versus really wanting to be a part of the detail of the work of the project. And we had had a large briefing about the schedule and the need to have the commitment and She's out talking to all the counties to make sure they're going to be committed to the schedule and work with us. And three months later, we had but we had presented some uh, conditions of potential things that can impact our schedule. So we're monitoring, and this is good project management. I'm good project manager. I'm going to monitor these issues, and if any of these things are realized, we we told you that there could be an impact. So about four months later, we came back with an impact, and um, she's pretty much wigged out and she, she thought I had really let her down and that she couldn't trust anything coming out of our organization so I was removed from that project so it was it was tough you know but the good news for me was I learned from that so each one of these times that that happened luckily I had the support culture in my organization that recognized the talent I was bringing so I was learning and I was demonstrating my learning and so as I moved forward in my career here at OSI and I've moved I was I got an opportunity to take on another project so the very first thing I did was went and met with a sponsor to make sure I understood what their priorities were, what the state of the project was, what their concerns were, and that they were on board with the vision. Um, that We didn't have really good stakeholder engagement. We started an effort to do a little bit better reach outreach with the advocates. Um, it wasn't perfect because they still had some issues going live here in the last year, but it was better. So, you know, you have to kind of just bring those lessons learned forward and you know learn from the mistakes but I, I can't express enough engage your leadership you know acknowledge you know where you have concerns you where you need help and ask for the help but there's no shame in asking for help or admitting you don't know something or you can't resolve it you know and that you need help 
somebody in the organization, you know, now I'm usually the one that people are coming to, but, you know, wherever you are in your career, do not, do not try to chug along by yourself and, and try to flounder, and flounder, because what you want to do is be early warning and early communication with your sponsors to make sure they know what's happening. And when you do that, we, I had another project, I see Christy here, we had, you know, uh, we had an insurance that it didn't come in on time, but we had very supportive sponsor engagement. And so we managed that relationship all along the way. So even though it was late, they were engaged, they understood the impact, and they were very much committed to the success of the project. So, you know, you just, you just can't overemphasize the need to have those kind of relationships with your with your sponsors and with your execs in your organization. And the higher you move, I, the other thing I'd say is get to know who the people, all of the deputy directors or all of the program directors in your department who are in the program areas because you will eventually at some point be doing projects for them or interacting with them and they want to know who you are and you want to know who they are. So you build that trust relationship for any future uh, projects that you're going to be doing with them. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I wonder, Melody, if you would share just a little more detail uh, and maybe focus to people who are earlier in their career. Mm -hmm. And it would probably, it would apply to wherever you are on your career continuum. But getting to know people, yeah. getting to know those people, do you have some advice for people who are new to the agency or organization? How, yeah. how do you do that? I mean, what are some ways that somebody could do that? Well, and it kind of depends on who you are and where you're at, but um, I will say that, uh, as I said in the last session, and what I just kind of was trying to demonstrate was that I was so focused on, I want to be a good project manager, I want to do this good, you know, that I didn't really focus on making sure I understood the business and I understood, so, you know, I, you know, whatever level you are in the organization, there's nobody in your organization that would mind you not s setting up an appointment with them to come talk about, well, what is it you do in, in child welfare? You know, that's what I did when I first went there at, at OSI. Went on a ride along with a child welfare worker. I went and talked to the, the program people who were my uh, counterparts in the organization just to understand what we did. You know, went out and visited counties. You know, so just make it your business to get to know the business of the organization that you're working for. At corrections, I did the same thing. I was on four different projects at corrections. We were out at the prisons meeting with all of the, the different staff and understanding what their needs are. You know, and so. I can't. Exp I think that's the real key to success is is partnering with your business and understanding the business. And that's like I said before. But go to meetings, get on committees in your organization. If you're just trying to meet the people in your organization, you know, if you don't know anything about it, you know. Yeah. In a meeting, you don't have to voice every opinion you have in a meeting. But at the end of the meeting, do not be afraid to offer your hand. Right? Walk up to somebody and say, "Hi." I'm, hi, I'm, and go and meet the people in the room. Because the next time you, you're in a meeting, they're going to go, oh, I know them. I know them, I know them, I know them. And it's going to build from there. Then it'll build into a conversation. Then it will build into a relationship. Then it will build into the, the first step every single time. has worked for me since from the very beginning. Just walk up, offer your hand, and say hello, and introduce yourself. Um, I've never, ever had somebody say, yeah, 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 I don't have time. Never once, uh, and that's a good way to start relationships. That's true. Make it sh make your make it a point just to meet as many people as you can in your organization. So, yeah. Christy. Yeah, I just, I just want to echo that. It's, it's it's so much about relationship management. I mean, that's what it is. I think if you can get you know the executive team and those you're working with to to know you, to trust you. And, if, and really, if, if they like you, that goes a long way. Because all that other stuff, if you can prove that you're a, a leader and you care about their program or their organization, be it you know, from a change management perspective or from a project manager, um, that's going to go um, a tremendous way. And then the other thing is, and those of us, I'm not sure who's IT and who's from the program in here, but um, you have to be careful and not talk over their head. Because sometimes, you know, we can use acronyms and, you know, we only have half an hour as a busy executive, so we're trying to get everything in there. And so you have to, I think that's a tip for a change management or anything in, this, in the project management arena, but you have to be um, aware of that as well. That's a really good point. We had a little bit of discussion about that this morning. And the other thing is is putting it in terms of, of the impact to them and, and what they understand and, and related to their business. And it's, yeah, it's tech speak. They don't care. Just... Tell me why it's not working, what are you going to do to fix it, and how are we going to move forward, and you understand why 
it's a priority for me to get this done kind of thing, right? So, okay. any questions? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, speaking of, you know, on the, on the program side, um, just, just kind of, again, bringing it down to the individual level here, where, and Bill is very aware of this whole project, where we're in the process, we turned his project inside out, I think because we took, we had a, a need, business need, that took a project that he was planning on doing at the tail end of his replacement, and we're putting it in the beginning of his replacement. Um, looking at trying to deal with the business processes and the things that we need to do, change management on the business side as well as on the IT side. What, how should we approach making sure that our IT members of the team are clear or have the, have the material that they need to be able to, to make the software changes or do the other things that are necessary um, in, a, in a way, you know, trying to, we've got a very short period of time to get this in. It's not a multi-year, it's a, you know, we need to get this now. You know? Um, moving things forward, what's your experience about the information that you get from the business side that allows, it, that makes it easier for you to do your job? I'll start, but I'm sure everybody has an example of this. Uh, you know, legislative changes come in every year, so we're always caught off with this, this how do we do it, how do we do it? You know, and so it's a very quick uh, group up, well, I think, with your sponsor as well as with your team to understand that the change is happening and we've got to address the change and we're going to have to come up with an approach that's going to be effective for us to address the change. And there's always a lot of what has to be done versus what can wait kind of analysis, right? You know, so sometimes some things can wait and maybe it's not a full automation day one, but you can, you can live with what you're going to be able, but then there needs to be an understanding of that workaround process that might happen. Now, on the IT side, you know, it's hard sometimes when teams don't like change, you know, and, and it's, they've got to understand it's necessitated by a business need and they've got to get, and we've talked about that earlier this morning, right, getting on board the whole team needs to be understanding what we're trying to accomplish with the project so that they can understand why a change might have to be something reprioritized. So the information that you were saying from your side, yeah. from the IT side, saying make sure your business people understand what what's in it for them then it's yeah. also from the business side saying to the other side here's here's why we really need to have this right and nirvana is when you have a business side that really knows what they're doing and really gets this right so that's that's kind of the best project i've ever been on is where that happened and that doesn't happen very often but you know that's where it's really good because they know and they understand and they understand what you're trying to accomplish, right? You know, but there's various shades of that. And so sometimes you have to really educate them about what you're doing and why a change is going to take time. Um, you know, so that's, it's a challenge, but that's the art. That's the art. And that's just what you gain by experience, right? You're not going to maybe do it well the first project you run, but you get better at it as you go along. And that's kind of what I was trying to impart about just learning. <laughs> Um, in my experience, one of the best things the business can do to help IT is to explain to me how do you do your business. You know, um, one of the things that I've noticed is sometimes the, we do as IT, we don't do a great job of asking the right questions, and so you don't know what it is we're looking for. And um, and so as a result, I think sometimes the business tries to put themselves in the IT shoes and talk IT speak to us because we're not getting what you're telling us, and um, and that doesn't necessarily help. So it, it's better if the business would tell me, the program side will tell me, this is how I do the work. I have a legislation coming in. This is how it's going to change my business processes. This is how I'm going to change the way um, I work with my staff. My call centers are going to be modified like this. This is how my life will change. Then I can take that and I can go and ask questions that help define now what on the IT system side is that going to impact. And then together we can determine how do I change those systems and what do I affect. From my point of view, one of the first things you can do as a business is start using the word we. Not you, not us, we. 
when a business owner comes in, stands next to me and says, we are going to do this thing and I'm going to put this much skin in the game and you're going to put this much skin in the game and we're going to get this solution. So that I immediately know as a program director that I have somebody who's going to be a partner with me and I'm not going to have to fight constantly through business. Also, engage the resources. Don't say we need this thing, change your schedule, move it to the front of your schedule and then, but yeah, we'll be there in a couple meetings this time and a couple, oh, but we've got this other thing that we've got to meet on and this is more important. If you're asking somebody else to change their priority, you've got to change your priority. You've got to show that you have as much commitment to what you need to get done as you're asking of them. You know, the communication being the two-way street. And once people see that you have a skin in the game, and that you're standing in partnership with the, with the project director or the, pro the program director, what'll happen is the staff will start to see the same thing. They'll start to engage. You'll start to get that sense of urgency that, that you're trying to get, both from the IT side and from the business side. Um, frankly, what we do is we usually ask people to come and live with us. We have space, you know, we have space, they come and they live in a bullpen with us for like four or five days in which we do requirements. But the thing is, is it creates a dynamic with the team right away. They start seeing themselves as us. Not you, them, no one so on. It's us. And so later on when you have to have a follow-on meeting or something like that, it's making a call to somebody they've worked with very closely. Okay? And that's how you can get something done very, very quickly uh, and convey from a top-down standpoint to your staff to get what you want. So... Uh, all excellent comments. I and mean, I think the thing I would add is, you know, at the Chemist Division, we have been taking on projects over the last number of years, and we haven't had a good intake process, right? And, you know, it's sort of everything's the number one priority, and we'll have to get to all of it eventually. Well, with the specter of system replacement, it forces us to prioritize our projects. And it really has been the impetus for going to more of a portfolio management approach. And so as we had a discussion about the provider enrollment project and is this a priority, it went up to our director and our director confirmed for us this is a near-term priority. And so we put it into our portfolio uh, for 2014, 13 and 14. Um, it did mean that other projects aren't aren't going to get done in 2014 and we had a conversation with the director that because this is a priority give unless we have additional resources this other project is going to push out um, in, into later into the system uh, replacement time frame but you know as we have that conversation with the various program areas it has to be about relative priority and we have a governance structure and approach where we meet every two weeks with the director of the department and we have a, conver a conversation about, you know, are, do these remain the same priorities? We see some con conflicts in priorities. How do we want to manage it? We always come with a recommendation and, and um, you know, we saw the business value. So on the IT side, that was helpful to us. And we learned, you know, not only what it would take to um, implement the system change, but it comes with a whole bunch of business process redesign, workflow design. And that really is a set of activities that is going to be led by our program areas. So it's coming to the project, understanding what we're going to do, what our vendor is going to do, but also the the level of effort the program folks are going to take on and I agree with with all the calls in particular that we we have to talk about the project as our project not that it's an IT project or that it's your project but it is our project and we will succeed together and if we don't work well together we will fail together excellent any more